Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Thursday, August 13th, 2020 meeting of the Penfield Planning Board. Lori, would you please call the roll? Hetsky. Hetsky here. Knauer. Knauer here. Tidings. Tidings here. Burton. Burton. Hold on. Pete was saying he can't hear us. Pete, can you hear us? I don't think they can hear us right now. Dave, do we have audio going out? I can hear you now. Okay, now Pete can hear us, okay. I couldn't before. Okay. All right. We restarted the meeting, went through the roll, and we're up to uh, Jim Burton saying that he's here. And please, we need Jim acknowledge. to acknowledge that he's here. Okay. He waved. Still here. Okay. Still here. <laughs> there we go. There we go. We hear you. All right. We're Nurse. having a rough time with the audio, <laughs> fellas. So. Please bear with us. This is our, I'm not sure how many Zoom meetings we have held so far, but it seems that we will be continuing this for the foreseeable future. So please everyone uh, have patience because they never run absolutely perfectly. Uh, one other uh, quick announcement before we get into our meeting. I, she didn't finish the roll. You didn't finish a roll. Okay, why don't you finish the roll? <laughs> Nursinger. I'm still here. Sangster. Here. O'Connor. Here. Weissar. Here. Gray. Here. All right. Now we're done. Back to you, sir. Okay. So uh, tonight I am uh, not real happy to announce that uh, Zach uh, Nursinger will be leaving us. Uh, he has uh, taken a job um, with an engineering firm. Um, north of New York City, Correct. right? And uh, it's a bittersweet moment for all of us. He's uh, been here for eight years and done a fantastic job, but we absolutely wish him well in the next chapter and every ensuing chapter of his life. Uh, <laughs> success and happiness, and thanks for all your help, all your service, your friendship, everything, and good luck. Thank you, and, um, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate that. Appreciate all the board members and all my time here, working with everyone that's come across this room, this board, back there when we used to use it. Uh, very thankful for everything that I've been through so far. It's been an absolute honor working with everybody. Great. Okay. So moving on. Uh, <laughs> and I'm gone. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we have minutes from the uh, July 9th meeting. Hopefully everyone's had an opportunity to review them. And can we entertain a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Tidings. Any second? Oh. I have to recuse. Oh, that. you had to recuse. All right, one, I will second. Only uh, one agenda item. Okay. Um, Roll. We can still, uh, everybody can vote on the minutes if uh, everybody reviewed the, the tapes. Okay. So, um, Lori, if you can possibly call the uh, vote. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Come on, Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. Okay. All right, now. so we have three action items for you guys. Hang on. Oh, Doug. sorry, am I jumping ahead? No, nope. I was going to say, Doug, uh, <laughs> turn over managing the agenda to Doug Sangster, and in his enthusiasm, he jumped the gun a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so we have three action items for you guys tonight. The first one is Penfield Square, and I think we have... Um, we have we have uh, Jeff, right? No, Rob no. and Lisa. Rob and Lisa. 
But let's before right. we go there, let's just show them the uh, new drawing and let's have the board have their discussion about what's been presented as option D. And Bob is recused, recused from this. on this. Correct. Right. Uh, let the record show that board member Knauer is recusing himself from this application. So Doug, Probably. if you want to give them a recap of what we're seeing here for option D based on our last meeting, um, I think the board will be satisfied with it, but let's just give them a quick recap of what's been changed from option C to option D. All right. Um, so one of the things you guys requested was um, the brick on the facade uh, that is shown in um, option D to add the brain wainscoting around the building except um, sort of the west elevation that's facing the memory care unit. Oops. Yeah, just the north portion of that west just, facing. Yep. Are there any changes that uh, staff uh, uncovered or anything on the, uh, the drawings that were submitted as option D? No, no, and we also sent this to your architectural consultant to confirm that all the changes are what you asked for, mm -hmm. and we had that conversation uh, probably over a week ago, so we're all set there. Okay. Um, from our view, it's what the board has asked for, and the applicant turned it around very quickly. We just had to wait for this meeting to come up. Yep. Right. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm satisfied. Terry, you, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Jim? Oh. Okay. He's still. I'm with this. Okay. Okay, great. Um, I'll make a motion. Then. Yeah, Terry, you want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make the motion to uh, approve. Yep. Do we have a Sightings. second? I'll second. Okay. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. All right, Lisa and Rob, you are good to go. Thanks and have a great rest of your summer. All right. Um, and your second, second action item is Canandaigua National Bank, 1998 Empire Boulevard. Uh, they're coming before you for a facade update. Um, uh, mostly new paint. One of the things they are looking for, and they will be going before the zoning board for, is they're looking to move the clock um, from the sort of the tower at the corner of the building to a freestanding clock. Um, they're going before the board uh, for setbacks for that and for signage on the building. Um, other than that, it's a fairly simple um, uh, new paint facade. Update. My understanding is the clock is going to be a similar clock to what's at the four corners. Yeah. In that little pocket park. Yeah, I, yeah a small freestanding, they call it street clock. Okay. Yeah. Any, yeah. No, anybody I have any comments today. on this? It'll be a nice addition. I'll match other branches, though. So and, and just for the record, we're welcoming back uh, Bob Knauer to the meeting. <laughs> yeah, so looks, looks you, good. You good? Yeah. Jim, any comments? No, I, I have no objection to this, AJ. Okay. Would somebody like to move to approve? I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second. So moved by Tidings, seconded by Knauer. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. Thank you. That You're welcome. That was Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, moving and right along. Yep. Uh, third action item uh, for you guys tonight is Penfield Storage. Um, they are coming back to the board to do a roof style change. Um, I'll bring that up here for you guys. Um, so the roof remove. Roof modification is to um, uh, allow for better uh, HVAC um, within the, the building for the climate controlled storage. 
Um, the building won't be any taller than what it currently was proposed at uh, or approved at. Um, it's simply just changing to a gable style to better accommodate the HVAC. Do you want to show them the rendering? Yes. Yeah, the rendering. Good question about the rendering. What view is that? Is that from the... Let me think about this. North to south. <clears throat> um, yeah, I was trying to figure that out, too. It's kind of like looking at it if you're looking north to south. Kind of, It's like an aerial view from the street of, well, say, the right side of the property if you're looking closer to, like, the Home Depot side. Yeah. You're looking up towards... 441. So I'm this way. Uh, 441 is in the background. Uh, oh, that's running. actually that's the back of the property. I'm sorry. Yep. No. We're looking north. We're looking northeast almost, aren't we? No. Oh my yes. gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's Brad. Yes. Who's that? Thank you, Brad. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The, the awning is on the south elevation. The awning that you see. Okay. Right, so the opposite end is the Penfield Road. Yes. Side. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody have any comments on this? I'm all set. None. None. Looks, looks fine. Jim? <clears throat> any thoughts? Okay. All right, somebody you'd like to move to approve this? Yeah, I'll move to approve. We have a second. I'll second tidings. So moved by Knauer, seconded by tidings. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Bash, Jim. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. All right, so that's it for our action items. Uh, just as an update for the board on one of your health items, um, 1185 Empire Boulevard, Bayview Landing. Um, they did make an application before the town board, um, and they, they had a public hearing on August 5th uh, that was tabled um, before the board. They came before them for an apartment building behind, sort of behind where K2 Brewing is. Um, we're expecting them to withdraw their application before you guys, or move to withdraw their application before you guys. Okay. All right. So with uh, no further business before the public hearing, I uh, don't know if it's possible for us to recess for about uh, seven, eight minutes uh, by downstairs. Is that cool with you guys? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. All right. All right. So we'll recess and reconvene at 7 o'clock for the mm -hmm. public hearing. Back to the public hearing portion of the Penfield Planning Board's August 13th, 2020 meeting. And uh, one thing that I would like to read uh, from the governor, due to the public health and safety concerns related to COVID-19, this meeting is being conducted remotely pursuant to the governor's executive orders, including Executive Order 202.1, which suspended certain provisions of the open meetings law. This meeting is being video recorded and is being broadcast live in the Town of Penfield's website, www.penfield.org, and on the Town of Penfield's government access channel number 1303. And the meeting will also be later transcribed and pretend that this was read uh, 30 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, the, we have two applications this evening. Um, We'll be bringing in our applicants via Zoom. Uh, this process works 95% of the time very smoothly and 5% of the time not quite as smoothly. So if you're watching from home or on your PC or the boat or wherever, um, please have patience with us as we all navigate the new normal. And um, what will happen is uh, We'll read the first application. The applicant will come into the Zoom meeting, give their presentation. The board members will ask the questions that we need to ask, and then we'll open it up for public participation. 
the public participation portion, um, you can call 585-340-8771 and get patched in by uh, uh, Scotty on the bridge downstairs. And, um, <laughs> or you can visit the town's website <laughs> you like that? At least you didn't call uh, them out by name. <laughs> <laughs> um, or you can go to uh, the town's website, penfield.org, and there should be a link on the home page to the meeting, and you can submit your questions or comments electronically. We will do our best to, if you call in, uh, you'll be put in a queue, and uh, I'm paying attention to a uh, computer screen here with uh, calls and emails that come in and as they come in uh, we get notified and um, we will you get to share your thoughts and we welcome your thoughts so with that all right Doug, please uh, read the first item first application uh, DSB engineers 2394 Ridgeway Avenue Rochester New York 14626 on behalf of U.S. Ceiling Corps, requests under Chapter 250, Article 12-12.2 of the Town of Penfield, of the Code of the Town of Penfield, for preliminary and final site plan approval for construction of a 9,800 square foot office warehouse building with associated site improvements on a 0.765 acre property located at 85 Sovereign Drive. The property is now or formerly owned by uh, Retlaw Rect Inc and zoned general business, application number 20P-0008, SBL number 093.15-1-2.116. Okay, I need to interrupt one more time or interject. Uh, I've been told that uh, board member Burton is recusing himself from this application. Is that correct, Mr. Burton? That is correct. Okay, let the record show that uh, Mr. Burton is recusing himself. Okay, I think uh, Mr. Walt Baker is on cue and um, up to bat. So, Doug, if you can possibly. Yep. Uh, Walt, if you want, you can share your screen if you want to show us anything. Otherwise, I can bring it up on uh, my screen. Can't hear him. All right, we can't hear Walt. Walt, make sure you're unmuted. He, he is unmuted. And you have a microphone connected to your computer. It's a new computer, I hear. Yeah. Walt, we can't hear you. Did we test him earlier? No. No. Not going on. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yep. We can, yeah. We can yeah. hear you, Pete. Okay, so I got the issue with you. Can he call in Zoom by the phone number just for audio? Potentially. Should be able to if he had to. All right, we have him unmuted on our end. Have Walt call us at the number PJ provided. Okay. Hey, Walt, if you can hear me. Do us a favor and call 340-8771 and downstairs will patch you in because we're not getting your audio through your PC. Thumbs up. What was that? I think Brian was talking to Amy. Amy. Ignore that. Uh. <laughs> it was tough not to. <laughs> Hello, Walt. Yep. You may want to turn your computer audio down, like the sound down. Okay, how's that? That's good. That's good. I can hear you. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Doug mentioned we're here tonight for preliminary final approval for the office park for U.S. ceilings at 85 Savage. 
And if we submitted in our application, uh, we're proposing the 9,800 square foot building. And the plans we submitted illustrate uh, the site plan, utility, grading, landscaping. And we did receive comments from the, the town staff. And uh, we, have, we can comply with their, their, their comments. Also with me uh, is Dave Walderick, the architect, which has submitted the building elevation. Uh, if you have any questions for him. Get a little feedback. Walt, do you want David to make any sort of uh, presentation about the building at this point, or did you want to kind of recap that? Um, basically, he submitted he submitted the the elevation. Dave could speak to that. Okay. Uh, David, you want to try joining the meeting so we can see you and hear you? In the meantime, okay, while we're waiting we can for Dave, yeah, we'll wait for Dave. Yeah, well, well, the building, as the board recalls, we were in last year for concept meeting, and uh, we we presented a perspective which is basically the same same building plan as what was proposed at the concept meeting, and then we uh, based on the general building zoning, we had to go to the town board uh, for approval, and then we needed zoning variances so we went to the town board last a year ago last july and then in august we went to the zoning in september we went to the zoning board to receive the zoning board variances and uh so now we're back for site plan approval and basically the building is the same building we presented back at concept okay i got a couple of questions for you walt if you're ready for them sure all right can you speak to it it looks to me based on the elevations that there are overhead doors at both the north the south the east and the west sides of the building the west side shows an overhead door off of the smaller office annex portion and there doesn't seem to be any pavement over there. It looks like that's green space as well as the to the north of the building, at least on the site plan. The site plan doesn't show any impervious surface on the north side where that 16 by 14 overhead door is shown on the uh, elevation. Right. Yeah, they had, David uh, was working with the owner and he wanted to have a an access door that's off the back of the office building to go down into a basement. And the rear garage door which would be on that north elevation. That's, that's relatively new, so we're going to have to modify the pavement to get around the back. Okay, so the... he was going to have an elevated, like a loading dock, but he got rid of the loading dock. Okay. The loading dock is going to be on the, the east side of the building. That's been removed. So the loading dock on the east side has been removed, but the overhead is still there, right? Well, that, we had an edge grade uh, garage door, but to the back of the east elevation, there was going to be a loading dock. And uh, we did away with the loading dock. Okay. So the, how does that uh, introduction of new pavement affect your site coverage in terms of green space?
know, we needed 35% open space in the yeah. building, yeah. and the pavement that we had was at uh, 59%. So we still have about uh, 16 or 8. Six, maybe six percent. Six, actually, right. So we're going to have to modify the site pavement to, to accommodate that. Okay. And then on the going back to the west side, off the office building part, I understand your comment about the owner. Uh, having a desire for a door to go off of there down into the basement, but is that the man door on the northern part of that, or is that the overhead door that's more toward the center? It's the man door. So is the overhead door actually going to be there or not? Well, the overhead door would be the, the taller building, the warehouse portion. But the, the elevations are showing an overhead door on, if you look at the west elevation, right. it shows two doors, a man door and a overhead, a smaller overhead door, but still an overhead door. Right. I don't know why they put that on there. Okay. And Dave, I don't know if Dave's on or not. Because it doesn't show either of those two doors on the site plan currently. Correct. Actually, either of the three doors. It doesn't show the north, the door on the, the overhead on the north side. See the north elevation or the man door on the north side. Right. So we're just hoping to get get them both to match. Yes, I agree. <clears throat> okay. Uh, can we get some um, detail on the lights that you have proposed, the light fixtures? So yes, again, the architect was working with the owner. Uh, they were going to put uh, building mounted down lighting. So I think he submitted the uh, a specification for the lighting and the siding. Um, I don't. We haven't. Yeah, haven't we I don't think we've received that here at the at town hall staff. Staff, you don't receive anything. Okay. Nobody has record of that coming through. So maybe an email didn't. Maybe got lost or something. Maybe you could resubmit it. Sure. And then uh, the owner and the architect fix those. So I'll verify what they need. Okay. Um, and going back to the lot coverage of the 59% that you have, does that include the pavement on the property that's part of Sovereign Drive? Because yeah. it does, okay. Yeah. yeah, it does impact it. You can see the property line actually goes through Sovereign Drive. Okay. Uh, can you just give us a recap of the variances that you got from the ZBA? Uh, uh, what we went in for and received back in September of last year, we had uh, the front, which was actually the, the, the south elevation, Required 80 feet, and we proposed 59. And we received the 21 foot variance on the east proposed line, proposed property line. Uh, was required 80 foot setback, and we're proposing 31, and we received that variance. Okay. And the west property line was a 20 foot variance, and we're proposing. 28 feet, so we didn't need a variant, but we had to list it anyway. Uh, the south, or the other side, the north property line, we re required a 20 foot variant, and we uh, proposed a 15 foot, received that variant. The east property line, we needed a 30 foot variant, and we we're proposing 20 feet, so we got a, a 10 foot variant on that. 
and then the, the north property line, which because of the jocks in the, in the property line, we needed a 30 foot setback. We're closing 19 feet, so we received the 11 foot variance. Okay. Okay, and then how are delivery vehicles proposed to circulate through the site and make deliveries? Well, generally, the, Ed, Ed was at the concept meeting, and uh, this is a warehouse where he's going when he gets deliveries, most of the deliveries actually go to the job site because uh, he does drywall, metal studs, insulation. So most of the most of the deliveries are, are delivered right to the project. So any deliveries that show up here are just limited to uh, the drywall compound and materials that they don't put there. So he's only getting deliveries like once a week. And they would come in on that uh, easterly and basically pull up into the building. They're supposed to come out the south elevation. And uh, the new man or the new overhead door on the north, I'm not sure why he needed that to start with because it didn't make sense to me. But they kind of talked about it with the architect. So. Okay. okay. So your understanding is they they come in off Sovereign Drive, go probably inside through the east door, right? Kind of loop around out the south door so that they can unload undercover. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And you're, well, you know, drywall. You don't want it to be out in the elements. But is it drywall? You'd mentioned that the drywall, that the big stuff, would be drop shipped to the site. Right. He still has storage of certain materials, but he doesn't have the materials. Generally, most of it shows up at the job site. So the size vehicles that would be making the deliveries, are we looking at like 10-wheel trucks, 18-wheel, what, you know, tractor-trailer yeah, type? or? From what he was telling me at the concept meeting, it'd be like 10-wheelers, the, the, the city delivery truck, not an 18-wheeler. Okay. 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 And how often do you think that happened? Uh, what Ed was saying was approximately once a week. Okay. Okay. Um, I've been to his office on numerous occasions, and there's hardly anybody there. You know, it's just uh, the administrative staff person and, and one other person, and it's there. He's out to the job site, but generally there's hardly anybody at the office. Oh, and there's nobody I've seen at the warehouse. Okay. okay. Any of you guys have some questions? I have one question, Walt. Um, dumpster pad, could you describe the fencing that you're proposing for around the dumpster pad? Uh, generally, we we put the board on board unless the town requires it to be a block structure, but it, it's a metal building, so it's kind of hard to make it match other than to uh, put up uh, the board on board and get painted to match the building. Okay. I think generally we want something obviously that has some longevity to it and also of course screens the dumpster. Do you prefer the black structure? If if architecturally, you know, it would kind of fit with the building, I would say yes. But, you know, that's, I guess, whatever you feel is appropriate. Again, something that's uh, going to last, not, not weather or deteriorate over a short period of time. Okay. Any other? That was it? That was it. Yep. Terry? Yeah, I just want to confirm, Walt, on the color of the building, it's like a clay grayish. Color? Yes, I wish Dave could get out. I don't know where Dave couldn't dial in. 
He's so they did submit yeah, kind of a building material samples to us yeah, uh, digitally. I can bring right. them up on here for you guys to show. Um, oh, okay. Cool. Great. I'm good. Thanks, Walt. Thanks. Okay. Oop. Looks like I need to log in again. Um, I got so caught up in this, I ignored your other job. I ignored, I ignored my other job. I guess I'm never going to be hired as a DJ or anything. Okay, what I'd like to do at this point is open it up for public comments. And uh, if anybody out there in the rest of the world would like to make a comment on this, we welcome your comments. You can call us at 585-340-8771 or visit www.penfield.org and submit a comment electronically. I'm looking at this computer screen right now and it doesn't show anyone um, that's online right now interested in making a comment. Just uh, one thing, we will continue to take comments uh, for the next few days. Um, so if you can't get to a phone or can't get to a, well, if you're watching this, you're in something electronic. So uh, your, your comments are, are still welcome. So uh, if we have no public comments, no other comments from the board? No. No. Okay. Um, just uh, one more quick question, Walt, if you don't mind. Snow storage and removal, what's the, um, where do you plan to store that? Uh, obviously, uh, the green space that we have, and if it becomes too much, like I said, it's, uh, is uh, staff is limited. We doesn't have, even though the parking we showed, we showed all the parking space. We don't need those. We're only going to need two or three parking spaces. So, basically, to the west end of the, the parking area, we could obviously store snow there. And if it gets to be too much, he can, uh, he's going to have to truck it off site. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, just one more time, board members, no more comments? I'm good, thank you. Nope. Still nothing from uh, the public. All right. Well, thanks for the presentation. <laughs> All right. I don't know if you got feedback, but just think you, I get feedback on this. Well, a little bit, but nothing that uh, we can't handle or haven't experienced before. Right. So. We will um, take all the comments of the presentation under advisement and move on from there. Thanks for uh, right. thanks for coming. I right, appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, Doug, if you want to, we can move on to the next present uh, next application. All right, uh, application number two, uh, BME Associates, Ten Lift Bridge Lane, Fairport, New York, one four five zero. Hmm? You're good. Watch my On behalf of Penfield Wesleyan Church, requests under Chapter 250, Article 12-11, or 11, Article 11-11.2 of the Code of the Town of Penfield for preliminary and final subdivision approval for two-lot subdivision to create a new parcel for the church and a separate parcel for the single-family residence on the existing 6.949-acre property located at 1586 Five Mile Line Road, the properly the property is now or formerly owned by the Penfield Wesleyan Church and zoned single family residential R120. Application number 20P 0009, SBL number 109.03 1 10.1. .1. All right. Looks like we have Greg. Oh, uh, I'm going to interject. I believe uh, Board Member Burton will be rejoining us for this application. So welcome back, Jim. And I think we have Greg from BME on the line. Yep, I'm here. Okay, go ahead and... Uh, do you wanna note that, Jim, that uh, Pete Weissar will be... Oh yeah, uh, one thing I will note that uh, our uh, 
Planning Board Attorney Pete Weissauer is recusing himself from this application. Okay, Greg, you're on. All right, uh, thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Greg I will be in the Associates. Uh, I'm here representing the uh, Penfield West Main Church for the subdivision application. Um, the church currently owns the property at 1580 and 1586 uh, Five Mile Line Road. Um, the current property consists of 7.274 acres of land and contains uh, religious church building and a single family house. Um, the church is proposing to subdivide the property into two parcels, whereby separating the religious church building from the single family uh, house. Uh, the proposed uh, lot R2A uh, will be 6.321 acres and contains the religious church. Uh, the proposed lot R2B uh, will be 0 0.953 acres and contains a single family house and an accessory structure. Uh, this project requires three area variances, uh, which were on the, uh, the ZBA agenda for next week. Um, proposed lot R2A area variance, area variance requested uh, is for the church setback of 51 feet on the proposed south property line where 100 feet is required. Um, proposed lot R2B requires two area variances. Uh, one for an accessory building, accessory building size where 415 square foot is required and 782 square foot is proposed. Uh, the other variance requested is for the accessory, the same accessory building setback, uh, setback of 10.7 feet on the south side where 50 feet is required. Uh, both area variance requests uh, for lot hire to be are for a pre-existing uh, accessory structure. Um, at this time, I'll uh, entertain any questions. Okay, thanks, Greg. Terry, you wanna Yeah, Greg, start have off? you uh, addressed the uh, comments from the PRC? I did. Okay, and uh, you don't have any issues with any of that? No, no, I, uh, we added, there's only three comments. Uh, we added a few notes to the plan and resubmitted. And uh, now, uh, what do you, uh, is this land, uh, the house and the, the barn or whatever you call that structure, so the plans are to sell that or is it already sold off? Um, it's not sold. I think that, I mean, they don't have any, any potential buyer, if that's what you're asking. Okay. Uh, I think what they want, what the church wants to do is just kind of position themselves so that they could sell it if, if need be. So it's, it's presently vacant then? Excuse Structure, the, the, it's vacant presently? That lot, that uh, house? I, I believe so. Okay. All right, so pretty uh, simple. So you gotta go to ZBA for three or four variances. And that's it, right? Yep. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Okay. Uh, Greg, there were some comments about the current uh, path or sidewalk that runs in between the two properties and yep. uh, some suggestion that it might be a good idea to remove that, I believe. Is that, can you speak a little bit to that? Yes, uh, they are going to remove that sidewalk and there's a note on it and that indicates a concrete walk to be removed. Um, they are going to, part of the PRC comments was to leave a little, a little pad at the entrance of the uh, church, which we will, they will. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, any other questions from the board? Uh, Bob, anything? No. I have no other questions. No. Nope. Okay. Jim? Okay, I, I saw him shake his, his head, but he's got no uh, sound again. Um, okay, thanks. Zach, you had a uh, comment? Yeah, I have one comment from staff um, for the board to consider and uh, one for the applicant. It's uh, regarding...
previous discussions at the town here um, about this location where the church lies between Rothless Park and the subdivision to the north, uh, we're aware that there's a common uh, footpath that's been kind of a, informally established over time um, to allow for, for residents of that subdivision to travel south to Rothless Park. Um, and either, whether it was during the open space plan or during the master plan for Rothless Park, uh, early in the 2000s, there was always uh, a proposal or some sort of intention from the town to perhaps find an opportunity to seek a pedestrian access easement on this property to uh, legally provide that to the residents uh, and to Rothless Park. Um, so my question for Greg, and I, I I'm not sure if he's able to answer it on this spot, but maybe he is, is if the church is amenable to a pedestrian access easement around the perimeter of the property where applicable to provide that access from our hammerhead turnaround at the south end of the subdivision that meets the north property line of the church's property and carry that down along the east property line of the church to the corner at Rothless Park. Um, I think it, our staff would be supportive of that based on just historical conversations that I've been made aware of uh, that predate my time here, but I was made aware of them this week. Um, Greg, I'm not sure if you can speak to that, but do you have any response to it? Um, I do. Uh, I was made aware of this this afternoon prior to the meeting. Um, I did have brief discussions with, with our client. Uh, it's for something like this to happen, it's going to take time. Um, the church has to, uh, there's several layers and levels of, of uh, authorization that needs to happen for the church to, to make a move like this. Um, I'm not saying they're not opposed to it. I'm, I'm just saying that they, uh, it's something that they really have to consider because of just of the timing of, of making these special meetings with their congregation and then once that gets approved then it has to go up to the district level so it, it would be some time just to, to make this uh, that access easement uh, doable if you will um, they would uh, again like i'm not going to speak for the, for the church because i i would have to talk to them and see where they're see where they're at um the one thing though that was uh a bit disappointing, I'll, I'll say, is the fact that this is just brought up now, this afternoon, just before this meeting. Um, it's my understanding that the church has been in discussions with the town since all the way, going all the way back to uh, the end of last year. And if this were, were or came up at that point, the church would have had time um, to kind of get their ducks in a row if they were going to grant an easement of this type. And, and make it available. Um, so, uh, like I said, I, I would have to go back to the, to the church and find out if this is something that they want to uh, agree to. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. Totally understand. Uh, I know I, I also had the conversation um, with the church. It sounded like they were agreeable, as you said, not opposed to the thought of it. Uh, and it sounded like they were also uh, willing to at least show a proposed easement on the map, uh, perhaps as a condition of approval of this board. Um, so I think that's something that could, could be added to the map. And then, as you said, there are layers to that process, and we could work with them to get through those layers uh, so, as long as they remain agreeable to this. Yeah, I would say that they... I mean, if you, uh, that, that one uh, map you show, sort of aerial that shows the, the existing path, you can kind of make it out a little bit where it's worn down. Um, obviously, that, to put an easement over that doesn't make any sense. I agree. And I do, and I would agree that if there were going to be an easement, that would be kind of wrap around the, the property so as not to uh, inhibit the. Uh, uh, the property in any way. We, we agree totally, Greg. We would never want to bisect the property with an easement like that. Um, it's more if that trail become, if that footpath becomes a little more formal, now we have a legal means of access to provide it uh, on the perimeter of the property without impacting 
the the property itself. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I will go back to the board. Any uh, comments based on that new information? Good. Nope. Okay. Good. We do have a few um, submitted comments. The first one that came in was from uh, Steve Powell, 28 Mount Eagle Drive, and his comment is, regardless of the outcome of this meeting, will the 6.9 acres of property remain in the ownership of the church? Can a developer purchase a portion of the property from the church to build on it? So I guess the first part of that question, Greg, uh, is that the lot, what is it, lot R2A, uh, going to remain uh, under the ownership of the church? Um, it's my understanding that the, the church is going to retain the religious, uh, the lot that contains the religious structure, and they have, at this point, have no plans of any further development. Okay, uh, and I think that I can potentially speak to the second part. Uh, it is a residentially zoned parcel. Churches are a conditionally permitted use in a residentially zoned parcel. And that doesn't mean, unless there are some deed restrictions or something that I'm completely unaware of, um, it is uh, possible that uh, in the future, if the you know, church goes out of business or something changes, um, that could a developer could conceivably purchase that and uh, build homes. But I don't believe that uh, anybody has that intention at the moment. I'm certainly not aware of any intention at the moment. And if uh, staff knows of any misstatement that I made, please let me know and I'll correct myself. The only thing I would add to I'm that, accurate. the only thing I would add to that, AJ, is that as the church, when the, as the, the church is only required to have, um, they're required to have a minimum of five acres if they continue to operate there. So with the remaining acreage that they have, six point, forgive me the number, 6.3, 6 um, and five acres, there's just over an acre left of potential anything, um, but that would prove to be pretty difficult given the existing conditions out there. So. As you said, you nailed it on the head. If if this if there's a day where the church is no longer needed on that property, and they are no longer at this location, they relocate. Sure, something could happen in the future, but we don't have a crystal ball, and, and neither does the church, so we don't know when that will happen. Uh, everything that we've seen and has been presented to us indicates that the church will remain the owner of this property and, and the six acres for quite some time. Right. Okay. Thank you for expanding upon that. We also have a comment from uh, Samuel Hartley, 1592 Five Mile Line Road. In regards to the variances, what are the implications for my adjoining property if the variances are out of spec? Is that it? So. 1590. 1592 is the property just south. Yeah, of yeah. The right. so just south. Your property, uh, Mr. Hartley, is just to the south. Um, the variances are for a, uh, it would become a pre existing non conforming use on structure. lot 2B for that accessory structure, that uh, storage. I think it's a storage building yep. out uh, that's currently there. And that uh, on a lot that is probably less than five acres, um, that size is currently not allowed. Um, but uh, in cases like this, uh, applicants typically go to the zoning board and ask for a variance so that they don't have to tear that building down. I would say his question is certainly uh, probably more appropriate for the zoning board. So uh, if you would like, 
Uh, between now and next week, he can email the zoning department, zoning at penfield.org is their email address, um, or contact their department to discuss the area variances and the natures of them. Uh, I certainly encourage him to do that and or put his thoughts in writing and that can be presented to the board in advance of the meeting as well. Um, so there are multiple avenues to approach the area variance questions with that board. Yeah, and I don't, honestly, I don't really see any implications for your property uh, based on this. It really nothing would change if the, the variance is granted um, from a physical standpoint. To your property or to this property okay if we have um, I don't believe we have any other comments from the public uh, once again I will reiterate our phone number 585-340-8771 or you can could can submit your comments online www.penfield.org and we will read them um, with their any other further comments from the board i'm good thank you nope good I'm good sorry. jim you're good good okay we have no additional public comments greg do you have any final words um no uh, no i would uh, uh hope the, the board uh, is in favor and support of this this project and uh, we'll do whatever we can to, to make it happen okay great thank you for your presentation and we will call this hearing closed yeah, greg if you stick around you we will have a work session immediately following this and you can hear the board's deliberation on it as well okay thank you all right so that concludes our the public hearing portion of the meeting we are going to go back into our work session um, <clears throat> and finish up our discussion and uh, gather our notes from the public hearings and make our decisions for the evening. So if we go back to... Do you want to stick, well, do you want to stick with this one? Yeah, let's stick Greg with this one get while Greg's on, online and let him go back to his family. Uh, thank you. <laughs> sure. Family show. We, we uh, promote family values here in the town of Penfield. <laughs> okay, uh, thoughts? Uh, how critical um, this uh, easement, I get the idea of the easement. I think it's a great idea. Is it a deal breaker? My, my thought was we have a, um, a draft approval resolution. Um, and is it something that we need to put the brakes on that, or can we, uh, we keep moving forward, or, or we can add it as a um, condition. as a condition uh, under that, and just see on a temporary, but just add it as a um, as a maybe on the resolution pending um, the approval of. I'm assuming it has to go between like the church deacon board or or get voted on by the church membership. So we could put it on there, sort of conditional on the church membership or the deacon board um, essentially approving it. Yeah, I mean, I, the, I just candidly, I, to me, it's a great idea to have it there. The fact that there's a path that's clearly visible there that for probably years and years people have been using. And uh, it's a shame that it wasn't mentioned earlier when they first came in if that's in fact the case but um, it is a great idea and I'd like to have it in there I just you know how do you as we, long as we can do we can it capture in your support that, we can that, capture uh, your support in the resolution yeah. and write the language such that we pursue an easement with the church that's at their speed and follows their approval process for obtaining it yeah all right, you guys good with that? That's the best way to do it, you know. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, that won't be a problem. They got to go to zoning anyway, so we got to. Right. So it's going to be a conditional that the the zoning proves their variance at the beginning. Correct. With. And then now, if we throw that condition in there, 
is all things you, that, that can be hashed out after the fact and wouldn't prevent this board from granting a conditional approval pending the outcome of the zoning board and us working with the church um, after that. Right. Any other comments, uh, Bob, yeah. Jim? Yeah, no. And I think that'll be helpful to them too, as opposed to just you know tabling it, waiting for ZBA, you know, just you know put them back. So if we can do it, put both conditions in there. I think that's the way to go. All you right, know. you're good with that. It's, yeah. it's reasonable. Okay, Jim. Yeah, I I'm in favor of Terry's idea. We've got to get three variances anyhow. Um, let's uh, let's table this and. And, uh, make sure that they have the variances that they need from the ZBA and see if we can get some uh, formal feedback from the church on their intent to uh, enter into a positive language for the easement. So wait a minute. Was that what you said? No. No. Jim, I, I'm sorry, maybe I didn't put it out there right now. I was just thinking to go ahead for the resolution this evening based on the conditions from zoning and the easement as opposed to tabling it and putting everything off because that's going to put them back either farther i was thinking okay i misunderstood yeah i'm sorry how does the rest of the board feel yeah, about yeah. terry's proposal so i'm i'm fine personally i'm fine with it i yeah, I, I think that's a good approach good. okay so do you want to uh, go yeah. ahead and before you act on the resolution, we yes, also prepared do. an EAF. Okay, okay, so we need to vote on the EAF. Okay. Somebody want to uh, yeah. move to? I'll make the move to uh, approve. Signature. Yeah, for EAF. I will second. So we have a motion to sign the EAF uh, by tidings, a second by Kanauer. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. <coughs> me. Now I'll make okay. the motion to uh, approve the resolution based on the conditions that we discussed. And I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion by Tidings, a second by Knauer to approve uh, the subdivision with the conditions that were discussed this evening. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. All right. You're all set, Greg. Greg Thank you're you very all set. much. Have a good rest of your evening. Thank you, Don. Okay. Let's uh, go back to the uh, building on Sovereign Drive. I think we need to. Hold on. Uh, uh, Burton. Oh, right. Burton's out. <laughs> <laughs> Recused is the word we're going for. <laughs> have a good night, Jim. <laughs> Actually, Jim, you probably, uh, I don't think we have any business after this. So if you want to sign off, um, go right ahead and enjoy, enjoy the rest of your evening, as long as you're watching. <laughs> All right, I just lost all the video feed on the, uh, well, looking at a screensaver. Uh, okay. Whenever you switch something, it minimized the participant view. I didn't. Did that's, you change anything? No, that's, that's PC TV side. Oh, they're playing. Okay. They're, yeah, PC TV yeah. playing with that. No, Best. everything's. There's nobody left on Zoom. Oh, oh that's why. Okay. Oh. Yeah, air still. Well, you are, AJ. I'm Unless on you Zoom. You want to have double screen. I'm on Zoom. <laughs> I'm I'm a nobody. Yeah, people. I'm nobody. <laughs> well, it's like you dismissed me at the beginning of the meeting. That welcome hey, to yeah, the, what welcome goes to around the club. comes around. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the club. Yeah, all right. I still have some fair, contributions. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, Doug. Let's talk about Sovereign Drive. Um, obviously, we got to table this. Uh, looks like they have some. Yep. work to do to uh, match up the elevations and the um, impervious surfaces. Those, to me, those are the biggies. Yep. And we're still waiting on um, the PRC sent a memo to them 
um, and requested revised plans. We're still waiting on those um, as well. So that, that would. Uh... OK. Cool. So any other items that staff is waiting on? Sounds this, like we need lighting. We need yeah, some turning. We need templates. the lighting cut sheets, like uh, isometric template. foot candle plot. I'd like to see the turning template of the delivery vehicle, uh, just to make sure we're not going to demolish a building in the process of dropping materials off. Uh, I know when we first talked about this, there was an 18-wheeler discussion, so I'd like to see it in writing um, mm -hmm. in response to your tabling resolution. Mm -hmm. And Mike, you had. Well, now that they brought up the whole. Size appropriately with the and the addition. Okay. So, so okay. obviously they got to make sure that that all works, right? And then with the door on that west side, that goes right into their stormwater facility. Well, what's the purpose of that? You, right. You asked that question a few times, so hopefully we get some clarification right. on it. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's possible that that would be well. If that's going into a basement, um, you know, it just depends on what's going down. There's a workshop down there that, you know, they want to be able to get equipment down. You know, I think it's fair to ask why can't that door be internal? Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, do I don't see know if it's people necessary that, as a point of egress. Um, they have the front door there. But did we even know mm -hmm. they were going to have a basement? No, uh, not to uh, my yeah, knowledge. I was, you're not aware. Hmm. Right. All right. Nothing that says they can't. No, but I'm more concerned with the, again, with the stormwater and the proximity to the basement. If that's truly where it is, and you know, hopefully they don't flood their own basement. Yeah. Grading right up to it. It's fair point. Usually, for a residential, we have a hundred foot requirement from any stormwater facility to a structure so that provides protection from you know flooding right I think that should be part of the tabling yeah. resolution I think that. it will be Mike's gonna write that part whoa, All right. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> he's an engineer does he know how to spell He's got the numbers. That's all I care about. Spell Ooh. check. I guess I'm on my way out. <laughs> I'm not scoring good points tonight. Valentine's uh, coming back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. All right. Uh, anything else? And uh, fence detail around the dumpster. Yes. Yeah, dumpster enclosure. Good call. Good catch. Is that basement? That's not a full basement. I mean, guess even know they had a first yeah. heard of a basement. Yeah, a so indicating. they need to show on the footprint where that is. And then another point that you just brought up, Bob, about the dumpster enclosure, if they're having a door and they're adding pavement, is that going to remove the dumpster enclosure? Because how are they going to oh. access it? Oh, because right. the enclosure's in the way. Right. Yeah, so they'd have to relocate that. All very good points. We'll send them a link to this video so they hear this conversation, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Anything else from staff? No. That's all we have. Okay. Not that uh, you can't think of something after the fact. You certainly can. <laughs> all right. I will move to table this. Uh, I will second it. We tidings. got a second. So I tabled, Hetsky tabled, and uh, Tiding seconded. Or moved. I moved to table. We'll we get move. it. We'll move to your move. Tidings Hetsky. seconded. <laughs> Hetsky, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. That's table. Mm -hmm. Doug, any other business that you need to discuss or bring up before no. the board, no, before we, we adjourn? Zach, it's been nice knowing you. Thanks, Zach. Thanks for all your time. Thank See you again, everybody. Congratulations. Um, See you on the other side. <laughs> yeah, don't be a stranger. You'll, you know where to find me. Come back and visit. Be up in Westchester County. Keep us informed. Uh, 
<laughs> events in your life and so on. You'll be the first to know. And good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate All right. With it. that, I guess with no further business tonight, we will adjourn. Thanks everybody for watching and coming and have a great rest of your week and month. See you in September. September. Get a summer.